this is a new plugin by my friend Tiny Tapes. I'll have the product link down in the description. And if you use code Brian, you'll get $5 off your purchase. This thing's brand new, so I'm still learning a bunch about this plugin. We'll probably learn some things as I go through it in this video. But I think that's what's fun. I like using tools that make creating fun and giving you unique and interesting kind of like perspectives on creating. So you can see I was just playing around with the synth. I think this looks really cool and glitchy, but let's go ahead and show you the workflow from start to finish. That way, when you download the plugin, you'll know how to use it properly. So we're gonna go ahead and click restart and it's gonna make our footage look completely like it's default, like how it shot out of the camera. So it prompts the question, do you wanna make a grid? For right now, let's not do the grid. Let's just go and show you some of the effects and then we can go back and make a grid and then we can choose full HD or 4K UHD. Our footage is 4K, so we're gonna do that. And then we go ahead and click choose footage. Now you can see that there is a name here and that corresponds to whatever you're clicked on. So you can see it says production ID for whatever. It's because I'm clicked on here. If I click on this Pexels one, and then click load, it's gonna change it to that name. So whatever clip you want the effect to take place on, just click on it and then click load. And then go ahead and go to next. And this is where it looks happen. So there's a bunch happening in the background right now. It's loading up everything. It's rather quick for how much is actually being loaded, which is really cool. And now it says, choose a base look and a graphic overlay, turn posterized time on and off and choose the frame rate. So right now this has been my workflow. The top option is pretty much the looks and then we got some overlays. So let's go through and find a look that we want first and then we can go ahead and play with overlays and frame rates. So we have this black and white camcorder, this black and white flicker, basic camcorder, colored camcorder, intense CRT, digital synth. This is one of my favorites. Intense digital synth, also one of my favorites. Digital synth too. Honestly, all the all the synths are my favorite. I, that's the ones I like, but I, there's a lot of different options for people that maybe that's not their cup of tea. So we got security cam, thermal, night vision CRT, CRT warped, CRT warp color, and that's it for all the looks. So there's a bunch of built in looks and keep in mind that all of these looks are now like fully customizable. So on this edit tab, each one is going to have a bunch of different options. That one didn't have too many options, but one like this intense digital synth has a bunch of stuff to customize. So it depends on the preset you're using, but they're all fully customizable. So let's lock in one that we want, maybe this digital synth. And then the second option down here is all these overlays you're seeing. So right now it has like this camera, it has the shutter speed, the frame rate, ISO, all this stuff. So we can just go through, kind of toggle through. I like the more clean stuff or maybe, maybe not even anything at all. We'll see. I just want to show you all the options that do come with it. That way, if it is something you like, you can use it. I think this one's one of my favorites, the scope. And then time with wave time let's go ahead and use this scope one and now you can see there's these buttons down here and if we turn on for example this it's going to make the frame rate eight frames per second so typically when you shoot you're either at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second this is basically posterizing it making it a little laggy looking that way it kind of like leans into that like crt glitchy kind of synth look i think i want something a little bit more like normal footage so we're going to use 18 frames per second and if we give it a second to load you can see what it's doing it's not only just keeping one look throughout it's like flickering and changing it is still rather quick for how like intense it's doing something on your computer but it will take like a second or two to load. I think this is looking super sick already, but the thing that I like the most about it is all these presets are now customizable. So if you go to edit, you now have these options like glow, radius, edges, glitch. So if we change up the glow, you can kind of see how the glow is a little impacted. Right now there's not too much white, so there's not too much difference between a high glow and a low glow. But if we change like the radius, you can see that becomes a little bit brighter. But one of the ones that I like playing with the most, and this is what I've been kind of leaning towards, is changing these edges. You can see how it kind of like makes this like glitchy looking back. Or if you bring it up even more, it starts becoming almost like white, which I think is really sick. Like you can have like this blown out look, or you can even like kind of bring it down just a little bit. And it has like, there was like this fine line I was getting earlier. You might have to tweak it. Yeah, like it has like this rainbow kind of with the white. And then there's some sliders like this that are kind of like, blurred out like if i click it i can't drag it and that's because you just have to turn on this glitch and basically it has like these like glitches for me that's a little bit much maybe we can just turn it down just ever so slightly just so there's like a little bit of that glitchiness and then there's also some other options it's cool because each preset has like some new buttons so you're kind of like always kind of experimenting and seeing what like each edit tab has because they're not all the same so for this one you can change it to night vision which i think is pretty cool or you can change it to black and white, 
which is also pretty nice. But I think I like the color. And then the final tab is track, basically how like your iPhone kind of like follows like, you know, the subject around your face. It's basically that effect, but you can do it for the face or body. There's a bunch of different tabs. But for this one, I think we should bake it in. So all you have to do is click done. And then you can name this like synth or something and click OK. So once you click done, your preset is kind of like baked in. It's like locked in. You can't change the settings anymore. So keep that in mind before going ahead and saving. But I really like the way this looks. Now back in your project tab, there will be a folder called surveillance. And then inside of that, you will see your new folder called synth. And then there is that pre comp that we just made using the surveillance plugin. So if you need to like drag it into a different comp, that's where you can find it really easily. Just keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and show you how to do one of those trackers. I like this clip because there's a lot of motion on his head. I feel like it's going to be really easy to like track to. It's going to like actually look good before he was kind of sitting down. So that's why I didn't want to do the tracker. Let's go ahead, do the no grid one more time. We'll show you how to do the grid at the end. Let's do 4K ultra again and then choose footage. Make sure you're selected on that and then load that in. Now it's going to do all that technical stuff again and let's go with like um some kind of like security cam or something because we kind of like want that look so just going around and kind of seeing what we have to work security cams cool um night vision crt is cool let's use this black and white camcorder and then turn off all the overlays because we're kind of going to add an overlay on already and then let's do that 18 frames per second again and now you can see there's a different selection of things to edit so there's quality and you can drag it up and down i think i like quality like pretty high like i want it to be a pretty clean image and then you can change the noise i like noise i like i like it grungy you can see the higher you drag it up it's almost taking away the highlights so I kind of like that a little bit, actually. Maybe we'll keep it like right there. And then you can see we have this glitch and we have to enable it and we'll just make it ever so slightly glitched. And then you can also do that night vision if you like. I like that that's just like a simple toggle because like sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. But for right now, let's go ahead and leave it off and then go to track. And you can see there's two selections, either face or body. I think because we don't really have this full body in frame, face will probably work better. So you can see once you load that in, you'll get a box here. And then if you click this little edit tool on the face tracker, well, first of all, if you click X, it'll actually just remove it. So click face. So if you like were to like click something and you didn't want it, cool. And you can also like make multiple. So like you could be like face, face. So if there's multiple people, you can do all that, which is really nice. Like there's a lot of things in this plugin that are like very intuitive that like you can kind of just like pick up on over time. And that's why I'm kind of just like showing you the workflow because honestly, I kind of forgot that was a feature until I just was explaining it to you guys. So for the face tracker, we can click this little toolbar and now kind of like the same thing, like there's different looks. So you can do the corner with crosshair, the full, the full with crosshair, and then also with the body, there's like different ones as well. So I think let's do just corners. I like that one. Like I was saying, like the little things in here is cool. Like you can see like the hue slider, whatever color you drag it to is like what the box is going to be. So I, I just thought that's like something, it's like, it doesn't really do anything, but like I like when tools are fun to use because I don't know, it's just fun to use, right? Like it could easily just be this red, but like the little details in here are really cool. But let's keep it this red, actually. I do like the way red looks with the black and white. And you can see we can't move low res right now, but if you click the star, we can make it low res and kind of like blurry. I don't know if that's something I'm really going for right now. Let's go ahead and keep it like pretty clean right now. And then there's shake because it's like already pre-animated a little bit. So you can kind of like turn down the intensity. I think that's probably good. And then turn down the intensity of flicker. You're not going to really be able to tell until like you play it. So keep that in mind. And then the way I go to track it is just go to transform, keyframe the scale and position, and then just kind of change the scale and position so it fits your clip. So for us, we need it that. I think that's going to look good. And then I'm just going to go like one frame forward and change the scale and position. So again, kind of just lining him up like this. And let's just do like two or three seconds of this. We can move surveillance out. I also like that it's like a little window too. Like you don't have to like dock it because it's going to be like something like you're going to do really quickly and then probably just exit out. And then you can always just go back up to window extensions and then surveillance. That's one thing I just learned. So if you do go ahead and close out of it, just don't close out of it while you're making something because that just deleted the progress that we made. So let's just go back to where we were, go to 4K, choose footage, load in that clip, click looks. We're just gonna speed run this real quick. No overlay, 18, quality up, noise down a little bit, light there, and then a slight glitch.
What I'm not explaining, it's a lot quicker. So we didn't really lose too much progress. Now you guys know too, because I actually didn't know that if you close out of it while you're making something, it kind of like has to cancel it, which I guess does make sense when you think about it. So let's make that shake and flicker down a little bit. Go back and just scale in position and scale it up. And I'm just gonna do one second at a time and then go back in between each second. So let's do, let's just do two total seconds for right now, just for the sake of tutorial, because this is just the process you do. I think it gives you a really cool look though. Like these like security camera, like grungy kind of things are in right now. And it's probably gonna look a little weird. So let's go in between each second and just add another point. The more points you have like the better it will be tracked so kind of just keep that in mind you can see how it's kind of like already kind of off center you just go in and give it more data points to know you can also like track it using the the a camera tracker but since it has like a little bit of shake to it already you'll see here in a second that like i don't think you really need it and then you can see we have this tracking here i think the boxes are a little thick so i think if you go to stroke with here in the effects controls it actually yeah so it makes it thinner which is nice I don't think that's an option inside the UI, but that's okay because you can just do it right here. So that's a little like cheat code pro tip. Also, what does the low quality look like with that? Is that cool? I kind of like the low quality with that. Just making it a little thinner and then adding the low quality. Yeah, that's hard actually. I think making it thinner definitely made it a lot cooler. So again, now you can go in and change all of these things, but just remember, if you want to close auto surveillance, just make sure to click done. And that's just going to bake it in. So we can do face track and now, if we click surveillance, it'll stay. Now I wanna show you guys the two by two grid so you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have your foot in your left, right, bottom left, bottom right, or you can do the three by three, but just keep in mind that you probably want different clips. You can use the same clip over and over again, but it kind of like defeats like the purpose of that security cam look. So let's go two by two, and then we can do the 4K UHD and then choose footage. And now this will be corresponding. So it'll be top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, kind of how you read, right? So for example, if you were in the three by three, oh, actually I haven't even used the three by three. That's, this is actually really nice. So it'll be left, middle, right of the top, left, middle, right of the middle, and then left, middle, right of the bottom. So that's cool. They made that pretty easy. Um, and then let's go to choose footage and then load in our footage. So you can kind of like preview the footage you want. If you just double click on it, you can see which clip is gonna be there. It's like the easiest way to like see which one's which, but let's just go ahead and kind of just load in whatever in order. I'm not really too particular, but just keep in mind, you can kind of choose where each footage is if you know. And then let's click looks. It's gonna do all that loading stuff again. And now we have four separate clips playing here, which is really cool actually. The default, like this looks sick. This looks like a security cam, like I'm like looking at whatever. And if you were like intentional with weight, the way you were shooting and you really wanted it to look like a security cam, you could like, you know, get your camera up on a tripod in the corner or somehow put it up in the corner and kind of get those angles. You know what I'm talking about where it's like, you know, surveillance, which is like funny because it's the name of the plugin. So these clips aren't necessarily like specific for that. So keep in mind, if you do like plan on using it that way, if you shoot a certain way, it will also like, accentuate if that's the word, is accentuate i think that's the word it will also like accentuate what you're kind of doing so again you can use all of the presets like before just go through god i love the synth stuff the synth stuff's so cool the only thing i wish like it could really really do you could like do it low-key yourself if you wanted to make a grid of four like so if i go to edit it's going to change all of them right if you really wanted to spend time you could make each comp its own clip, like without using the grid, render it or just turn it into a composition, scale it down to 25% and put it in top left, pop, top right, whatever. If you wanted to like make each one like unique, let's use the security cam. That's perfect. That's kind of what we're going for. And let's see if there's any like, the time's kind of cool because it's like unique, kind of like almost security cam kind of steel recording. Let's see. I like this one. This one's been my favorite, the scope. Oh, the time also in the bottom left's nice. I think that default one's honestly really, really nice. Just the camera. And then let's do, I feel like these things are a little bit more choppy most of the time. Let's do like 12 frames per second. And then we can turn up or down the quality. I feel like the quality down a little bit might be cool with this. And then even introduce some glitching, but not too much. And you can also do like night vision. I think if you plan shooting a little bit better, like also the night vision will look better. It's kind of hard to like sell the night vision look when this dude's standing in front of like huge windows with light coming in. It still looks cool. But like, you know, if it was a little bit darker of a room, less lighting and stuff, I think it would look better. And then let's go ahead and click done. And then we got that security cam look. And then one of the last things here, we'll try on this track clip. There's also some transitions in here. So if you go to this bottom right button here, 
there's it's kind of like a secret button there's like some transitions so you can see you can kind of just find a transition that works for you on something quick this one looked cool so wherever you put your playhead so we can kind of have it right where this tracker kind of ends and we'll split it that way the tracker kind of turns off right at this glitch and if you click apply because our playhead's right here it's going to apply it and i think i only want one flash and then just line it up a little bit differently and honestly because it's black and white we can just do like a hue and saturation on it and then go to master saturation and turn it down I think the transitions are like a nice thing that they added in, but honestly, I'll probably just be using surveillance more so for like the digital synth stuff. Those, that digital synth one, two, and then that third one, those are like the ones I'm gonna be using the most because like when you customize it, you can get some crazy looks. That's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it helped you make a decision to see if surveillance is worth it for your workflow. I think I'm gonna continue using it a bunch because I just really like the way CRT and synths look. Like I said, if you guys want to grab surveillance, be sure to use the link down in the description and use my code Brian at checkout. You'll get $5 off your order. Support me as a creator, support my friend Tiny Tapes. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Peace.